happy OnCon. I hope you guys are having a great time so far. I know I am. I love OnCon a lot. I wasn't able to go to the December one, unfortunately. It was pretty busy, so I really missed it. Um, but I'm really excited to be back here for the March one. So thanks to everyone that makes this thing possible. It's really fun, um, especially when we're not able to really go to conventions in person as much. This is such a fun way for people all over the world, even, honestly, to gather together and just talk about anime, talk about the things we love, and uh, it's such a fun environment, too, like, the, the people that come to OnCon and contribute. It's really awesome. So, anyway, my name is Kira Fox, and I will be running Anime IRL, Japan's real-life anime locations. Like, have you ever thought about that? Like, you're watching an anime and you see... A, a scene or maybe like a bridge like an Anohana which is the picture here on the PowerPoint and you're just like is that how do they get the references for these well in a lot of anime it's it's a real place in Japan that you can actually go to and we'll get more into that but just a little bit more about me before we start I do currently reside in Japan I reside in a prefecture called Ibaraki um, most people kind of know general, generally where Tokyo is. We're going to get into a geography lesson later, so don't you worry. If you don't know J J Japanese geography, w we'll get there. Um, but if you have been to Japan or you know a little bit about the geography of Japan, you might know kind of where Tokyo is. It's pretty central on the main island of Japan, which is Honshu. You, when you land in Japan, you're either going to, if you're not going to Osaka, which is way south, if you're going to, a lot of people usually land in Tokyo first, um, you're going to land at either Narida Airport or Haneda Airport, and both are very close to Tokyo, they're in the Kanto region of Japan, and so I live in the northern Kanto area of Japan, so that's kind of where Ibaraki is. I'm a bit north, about an hour drive from the uh, major international airport, and really an only hour train ride to central Tokyo, so honestly, very convenient. Um, and I specialize in filming locations in Japan that are featured in anime. I say specialized. I'm no, I'm no pro. There's no pro in this kind of thing. It's just, that's just something that I'm really interested in and I really uh, love doing. And we're also going to discuss in this panel whether or not the result of anime tourism has been a good thing for Japan. Is it something that a lot of towns are taking very seriously? Has it maybe caused more trouble than good? We'll get into all of that cool, interesting stuff. But first, let's talk about the anime that we're going to talk about. I know I have a picture right here um, from your name. I've actually never been to these stairs. I believe they're in the Shinjuku area, actually. I've never been to the Your Name stairs. Those, these are really popular, but really for Your Name, these stairs are pretty significant. Um, but I can't recall anything else being super significant. I guess I'll go there one day to maybe film around, but we're going to, today, take a look at these series. We're going to take a look at Anohana, which takes place in Chichibu, Saitama. And don't worry if you don't know where these places are. You'll learn. I'll teach you. Uh, Girls in Ponzer. Um, which is an Oda Ibaraki, which I did do a panel on at OnCon um, several months ago. So we, we're not going to dig maybe as deeply into each one of these so that we can get through it. Um, but I will have a video to show you. And if you're interested in like watching the full videos, I'll, I'll link you my channel. No worries. Um, so Lucky Star, which is in Kuki or Washinomiya Saitama, Steins Gate we'll talk about, I know there's a lot of you Steins Gate fans out there, um, which is Akihabara Tokyo, Sound Euphonium in Uji Kyoto, Love Life Sunshine in Numazu Shizuoka. And there will be others at the end. I actually recently did go on an anime pilgrimage for Bunny Girl Senpai, so I can talk in depth about that even though I'm not ready. The video clips aren't ready, but we will talk about that. So these are the anime that are going to be featured in the, uh, Panel, let me know in the chat. I'll be sneaking around in chat. Let me know in the chat. Is your favorite anime up here? Let me know. My personal favorite out of these, it's hard between Sound Euphonium and Lucky Star, to be honest. All right, so let's do a short geography lesson. This is Japan. If you didn't know, here's Japan. 
So um, the the red at the top, that's Hokkaido. So that's a place where uh, th there's a lot of snow. It's actually the, the Sinnoh region of Pokemon. If you guys are playing Pokemon Legends and Arceus or you just played Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, uh, Sinnoh is based off of Hokkaido. Uh, the yellow is Tohoku. I used to live um, in that area. Tohoku, unfortunately, is kind of famously known. Uh, it's hard to put it this way, but that is where the 2011 earthquake and tsunami hit. And really, like, the tourism there is very, very low compared to, like, some other places in Japan, but, um, especially after their earthquake and tsunami disaster, but, uh, hopefully they, I mean, it's been 10 years, but slowly but surely, Tohoku's getting back on its feet, and then the green is the Kanto region, which I specified earlier. The Kanto region, where I live, you, can, you might be able to see Baraki there, um, the Kanto region really has so many different places you can go to if you're an anime fan or if you're interested in anime tourism lots of like day trips so we'll be talking about um you can kind of see Saitama which is like right near close to Tokyo that's where Anohana takes place that's where uh Lucky Star takes place so a lot of the places you'll be able to get to within a day so you know don't fret I'm not gonna suggest you take like a seven hour train to see this one bridge from this <laughs> anime. Um, I, I really want it to be something that's like super worth your time. And so I won't go too far into the other regions of Tokyo um, because I haven't really explored much of the southern uh, or southern the, of Japan, the southern region of Japan yet. Um, but this is just so that you can get an idea if you want to take it take us take a picture or something of this to take go on take a picture if you have to. That way you can reference it. Did you do it? Did you get that smartphone on? Did you take a picture? So that when I say this anime takes place in Saitama or Ibaraki, you're gonna know. All right, last chance. Good, I hope you took a picture. If you, if you don't know the geography, I'll know it well. So, let's talk about Anohana. Oh man, Anohana, what a gut wrencher, right? What a sad, sad little show. And, and don't worry guys, we're not gonna spoil any of these anime. So if you haven't seen them yet, don't worry, I'm not about the spoilers, um, but I am about just showing you how the towns that these anime take place in, most of them at least, have fully embraced anime tourism, and that's the most interesting thing about it, so we won't really be talking about spoilers, right? So, this takes place in Chichibu, Saitama. You can get to Chichibu, Saitama, um, well, actually, I still have the map up here, so you don't really have to take a picture, but hey, it's good for reference, right? So Chichibu Saitama, you can get there from Tokyo, and I'm, I'm mostly just assuming that if you come to Japan, you're going to land in Tokyo, because most people do Tokyo first, which honestly, I think is a great recommendation. As much as I like Osaka, Osaka is like a seven, eight hour drive away from Tokyo, so completely different side of Japan, but most people are going to land in Tokyo. So if you are in Tokyo and you want to, you love Anohana, you want to go to Chichibu Saitama, you could make a day trip out of it. It's a bit, a little bit further than some of the other anime pilgrimages that I've done. Um, just because it's on the west side of Saitama Prefecture and it's up in the mountains. So you have to take a super local train to get to Chichibu and it's like a slow train. Like it's not like you're going to go on the Shinkansen or on the bullet train, like the really, really fast trains and get there quickly, you're going to have to do a lot of transfers and take a lot of like smaller local trains that are just naturally slow and make a ton of stops. So what I did for the Anohana uh, pilgrimage was, is I stayed in uh, Saitama, Saitama, which is the capital of uh, Saitama city is the capital of Saitama prefecture. So that'd be a little bit closer, but if you're coming from central Tokyo, um, prepare to maybe set aside maybe three hours of travel so you can do uh, the Anohana pilgrimage in a day. You know, wake up early, set, set aside three hours to get there, three hours to get back. That gives you a pretty good amount of time. It's going to be a long day to do um, Chichibu. So I want to talk about the bridge, the shrine, and the mountain overlook. So if you've seen Anohana, you probably know the significance of the bridge, which was actually seen earlier um, on my first slide. Um, the shrine where the characters gather um, all the time, that is something you can go to in the Mountain Overlook. So I do have a video here, 
that I will not be running the sound on because they're, you know, I think I've used copyrighted music here and there in some of the, the videos, so I don't want to get the channel in trouble, right? It's like, oh, we're, we don't want to get on kind of trouble. So, um, I will be running these without sound. I'm not going to run the entire video at all. I'm just going to show you certain parts of it, and if you are interested in, here, I'll go ahead and start a little bit of it. If you're interested in kind of, um, diving deep and, and actually wanting to watch the full video, they're about, this one's about 17 minutes long, I think, then I will link you my channel, it's Ginger Guide in um, Japan, but just for the sake of the panel, I'm just going to show you kind of how, how Inaka, Inaka meaning countryside, how countryside this place is. I don't exactly remember how specific they are in Anohana about Chichibu being pretty rural, but let me tell you, it's it's fairly rural. So you definitely have to take this like local train to get there, right? Um, and one of the first things that I noticed is when I came out of the train station, there is a, a welcome center and, or a, a tourist center. And at the tourist information center, there they had merch from Anohana. So you could, if you're struggling to find uh, Anohana merch, if I can find it again, uh, this is, you can, you can get it here, and I just knew as soon as I got off the train in Chichibu that Chichibu is a town that is embracing the fact that their, their town is in Anohana, even just by, like, the decor they had, um, this vending machine here, um, and then the, the welcome center being full of Anohana stuff, that's what I like to see. So... The first thing on my list to do in this video was actually to go to the Overlook and I actually ended up renting um, a bicycle to get up there in the rain. It was quite, uh, fun is, a, fun is a strong word, but it was in the rain. But this Overlook right here, you might recognize, especially near like the end of the anime, um, this is kind of close to um, the, the character's uh, clubhouse actually, if you remember in the show. And I think, there we go. So this is actually featured in the uh, opening right here. You can kind of see, like, there's that tree and the fence and then the overlook over the city. It's, it's the, ah, uh, Hitsuji, Hitsujiyama Park Observation Area. That's where you want to go. Um, and yeah, if you're just an Anohana fan, you're just like, I need to go there. I want to go there. Um, I will have, like, you can just go to my channel and go to this video. And I have the Google Map links there if you or specifically need to know where to go. Um, so after the uh, after the outlook, I decided to go to the shrine, which on the way to the shrine, they have the manhole covers with like all the characters on them. So there's Jintan, uh, Jintan uh, who's the main male character. And you can like try and find all the manhole covers. I was not able to find every character. That would be like an all day thing. There's probably information somewhere on the internet about where each character is. Uh, manhole cover wise but you can kind of see like there are um, there's the characters sitting like on that same bench with that same like boy cutout thing you can just see the resemblance it's it's so cool there you have Jin Tang coming up the the stairs here and uh, it's just it's so cool that's where that manhole cover cover was was at this shrine and also um, I went to the side of the shrine so these wooden wooden little um, cutouts that you tie up like this. So these are called Emma in Japanese. Emma. And people write like their wishes and their prayers, but usually like prayers to God, the gods and stuff on them, which you would think is so super serious. It's really not. Like I always see people writing Emma for like, oh man, I hope I can see my favorite band this summer. Or like, I hope my waifu from this anime. And it's in Japanese. So it's not like, you know, weird gaijin otaku like right so it's like japanese people it's like don't even take the prayers that seriously so like you know uh, shrine like when i go to shrine like I, I better act straight because you know i am a gaijin but i have seen like japanese people like just completely act inappropriately at these places does not mean you should but it's just it's funny because you think it's like this whole serious thing i've literally seen like goku faces written on emma with like nothing else on it right so, as you can see here more in the video, just uh, the Omikuji, which are like the fortunes that you can get at a shrine. You've probably seen it in like New Year's episodes for anime. They are Anohana themed. And you can actually buy your own Emma with the characters on it. So here I'm unwrapping um, a, a, a Memo one that I have bought. 
So that is some things you can do at the shrine. The shrine just fully um, embraces the fact that it's in an anime, I, it, which it doesn't have to do. Um, but I absolutely love it. Also got super lost on the way to that shrine. So, uh, so here is the famous bridge. So, ah, man, this is, you can see the Anohana bus was actually going by. Yes, there's an Anohana bus with like the Anohana art on it that goes around the town. It's very cool. It was actually going across the famous Anohana bridge that you see the characters running across all the time. Um, it's featured in the main key visual art for the anime as well. So this is kind of the number one spot you want to go to if you're an Anohana fan. Um, and this is just the walking area. So they have like a car area and then a pedestrian area. It was just super fun. Had a blast doing this. Even though it was, it, I was out for eight hours. I, I think I biked, well, I think I was biking for maybe five hours, but out for eight hours all, like throughout the whole day. It was just raining the entire time. So that was a lot of fun. But hopefully when, if you get to go to Chichibu, uh, hopefully it'll be sunny for you. <laughs> So we will move on from Anohana. That is just like just a perfect scene right here. Um, you know, if you've seen Anohana, this is something that definitely sticks in your head. So we will move on from Anohana, and we'll talk a little bit about Girls in Ponsor, which I went into uh, a couple months ago actually during OnCon. I did a Girls in Ponsor panel, so we'll look a little bit into. Um, uh, it today as well, but not too much so we have time for other things. But this anime takes place in Oarai, Ibaraki, which is kind of my neck of the woods. It still takes me like an hour to get to Oarai because I'm kind of in the central part of Ibaraki. Oarai is more in the northern part. So the significant things from here are the beach, which is, um, it's, it's in a lot of Girls and Ponsor episodes, but I remember it specifically being in the OVA <laughs> a lot. Um, the Marine Tower, which is featured in a lot of art, and of course just different episodes of Girls and Ponsor, and then the train station as well. I'll show a little bit of this video, we won't be doing sound of course. Um, so I kind of started out my journey in Mito Ibaraki, which is the capital of Ibaraki, because there is a local train from there to Oadai. Now I'll show you at the end of the video, there's actually a Girls and Ponsor train, which you may have heard me talk about um, before if you were at the OnCon a couple months ago, but already, even at the station, already fully embracing, <laughs> already fully embracing Girls and Ponsor. So we've got the Girls and Ponsor girls right here. They have stands, like this is at their local station. This is a really tiny station. I don't even think they did um, like the electronic pass cards. This station is so small, they just did, um, like paper tickets. So very small, very old station, right? And even at the station, they had Girls and Ponder merch that you could buy. That was really crazy to me. So I knew as soon as I stepped off the train, this town is fully embracing the fact that it is in an anime. So even outside the station, there's um, there's a museum that has like different kinds of uh, Girls and Ponder artwork and merch and stuff. And even the voice actor for uh, Miho came to Oadai and her signatures and things are there. So the first thing we actually did other than like starting off and doing the shopping because there was a lot of that just, I'm still in the station area at the point of in this video is we did head to the, oh, this is outside the station by the way. So you can see that there's an anime screenshot here and then the, um, the dolphin statue on that side. So very close to what is represented in the anime. And just, we were walking to the beach from the station, which takes about, it's about a 20 minute walk. And just all of these local places completely um, embracing the, the tourism that is coming from Girls and Ponser. Which when you think of Oradai, Oradai, it is a port town that I think used to be, it's one of those situations where like this port town was way more uh, important, you know, 20, 30 years ago, but unfortunately now it doesn't really get tourism like it used to. Um, but with Girls and Ponzer, I think that anime came out in like 2013, you know, the manga probably even before, um, you know, it's, it's a whole other reason to come to Oadai and it's a reason for Oadai to maybe bring people in, bring tourists in. So this is at the Marine Tower. You can get more Girls and Ponzer merch, of course. Um, you can take pictures with the Girls and Ponzer girls here. But the best thing about the Marine Tower is actually there is a Girls and Ponzer cafe at the very top. So you see here, I'm going up and you can get like little meals that are slightly inspired by the Girls and Ponzer uh, anime. 
So I think I ended up getting like ah kakigori, which is shaved ice, just because it looked really good. And then you can kind of see they have like imprints of different um, uh, like emblems from the series. Put on, like there's a tank imprinted on the carrot there. Um, this was actually fish fried fish curry, really good. So this is inside the um, cafe. You can see that uh, garupan. The that's what they call it in, J in in Japan garupan. There's like art, more things you can buy. They're really trying to just sell you all this girls and ponds stuff. So going back down the tower, I think the last, the one of the really last things that I wanted to do was there is a girls and ponzer um, shop. As if there was, as if if you didn't waste all of your money, if you didn't spend all of your money at the cafe or at the station or at the uh, museum, well. Uh, there's more for you to buy at the official Girls and Ponzer store of Odai, which is in a shopping center that is also featured in the OVA. So if you've ever seen the Girls and Ponzer OVA, it's literally just they're going to have like a beach party, and so they all have to go buy bathing suits. You know where this is going. So they go to the shopping center to go buy bathing suits. That whole episode takes place in the shopping center in which this uh, shopping area, this Girls and Ponzer shopping uh, store isn't. It's very fun. You can also take cute little um, uh, pictures with the, yeah, that's quite fun. So I think after this, the one, the one other thing I want to do, there's tons of shrines here. It's a very historical place, is I wanted to see, you see on this piece of paper, that's like an official artwork where they're looking at a toady gate that is sitting um, on a rock in the, in the, in the ocean. So we went off to go find this, and there it is right here. This is one of the most scenic places. And I know it doesn't look that scenic right now, but it is one of the most scenic places in Ibaraki. Usually people go and see it when the sun is rising. So that is the side of um, the ocean where the sun rises. And can you just imagine the sun rising and just seeing this Tory gate? It just, was, just seems like it's so beautiful, even though it was a really cloudy day. Um, I just, I just, it was a really beautiful sight. So now I'm just going back to the station, and that's really all. I mean, there's just so much that I could have stayed in Odai for and gone to all these different, uh, big, like, you just see, it's, like, it's crazy. I still don't think I've been to a town that embraces Girls in Ponzer the same way that Odai Station does. There's even a taxi, there it is, a taxi cab that features Girls in Ponzer. Imagine being that guy. <laughs> Imagine being the taxi driver that gets to drive the Girls in Ponzer taxi. So as you can see, even if you're like just slightly a fan of Girls and Ponzer, this, you got to go to it. You've got to go to it. They just, the way this town fully embraces Girls and Ponzer, I absolutely love. I don't think I've still been to a town that embraces um, the show that, that, that their city is in as much as Orai Ibaraki. So definitely recommend. So the next one we're going to talk about is Lucky Star. Now, Lucky Star also takes place in Saitama, so the same prefecture that Anohana took place in. So the big things I want to talk about is the shrine, Washinomiya Shrine, which is in the New Year's episode. There's a New Year's episode where the first half of the episode is, is like New Year's Day and they go to the shrine, and then the later half of the episode is them going to Comic Cat. So it's from that episode. And then um, there's also the station front of Washinomiya, which features some girls, uh, Lucky Star stuff we'll get into. So again, we won't be running music, but I'll just show you. So Emma also, here we go. We have tons of um, Lucky Star Emma at Washinomiya Shrine. So from Saitama City, which again is the... Um, is the capital of Saitama Prefecture. I took, I didn't, I didn't even have to take a local train, really. I took a pretty major train to Washinomiya Station, which is right here. And right across the street from Washinomiya Station, there is, um, like a little store where you can buy just foods and other little touristy knickknacks. Like kind of a, not even a chain store, just a locally owned store that actually sells Lucky Star Ramen, Lucky Star Hot Sauce, and, uh, other like Lucky Star, um, like Japanese katsu, katsu kind of sauces. So this is inside the store. As you can see, they are fully embracing like, yeah, welcome to Lucky Star Town. Uh, I just love this so much. And these are just people that just locally own this, this little store, but 
I mean, fully embraced that in 2007, an anime called Lucky Star came out, and people are coming here because of that. Um, so they've seen a lot of really good business. Actually, I'll show, I'll show you later in the video, I do buy one of the uh, Lucky Star sauces. It's like the Hiragi Twins, uh, the Hiragi Twins, um, like Katsu sauce. So as I'm walking to the shrine, we have this mural here. It says, uh, Yokoso Washinomiya. Eh, welcome to Washinomiya. And just, I'm guessing fans just came and painted this mural. And you can see it's signed by the different artists who drew it. And just about every single Lucky Star character is here. So you don't want to miss this, actually, on your way to Washinomiya. Um, you'll, you'll get off at Washinomiya Station, and then as you're walking, and Google Maps will take you this route automatically, so you won't miss this, but just set your, your Google Maps from Washinomiya Station to Washinomiya Shrine, and as you walk, you literally cannot miss this. Um, you can also see it from the train, so you'll be able to get kind of an idea of how to find it. So now I'm walking over to, ah, so this is a scene you guys might know well. I remember when Lucky Star came out, I think the biggest thing about it in 2007 was that the opening was so crazy. I'm sure we've all seen, the, if, if, if you're an old weeb like me, we've all seen the Lucky Star opening. And it's, it's just an iconic anime opening, in my opinion, at this point. Uh, I mean, Lucky Star came out, it's crazy. Lucky Star came out 15 years ago. Like, I think we can call it a classic at this point if it's 15 years old, in my opinion, right? So this is um, the part of the opening where you see Kagami walking. I might have it on here, actually. You see um, Kagami, the, yeah, there we go, walking. Now, you might also notice right here, um, where is the Tori gate? Because in the screenshot, there's a Tori gate, and now there's not. Unfortunately, because of how old um, this Tori gate entering into the shrine was, I guess due to weather and just age, and I guess they weren't keeping it, up that well, it actually collapsed, uh, I want to say maybe in 2013 or 2014, it hasn't been too long ago, and it collapsed, and they've just never really rebuilt it back, which is really surprising to me, um, so a lot, of, I remember a lot of Lucky Star fans, um, I, I remember reading that a lot, a lot of Lucky Star fans were like so just, um, destroyed that, that such a sacred anime place has been, in a way, uh, destroyed. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully maybe one day they'll rebuild it back. But yeah, this is the scene where Kagami walks down the road in the opening. And so the, uh, this, this area of town is covered in Hiragi twin stuff specifically because, you know, the, the Hiragi twins, I think the anime, they actually are like the shrine, they're like shrine maidens, right? And they, their family link owns the local shrine. So, this part of town that has a shrine, Hiragi Twins, they're everywhere. So you can actually go into the shrine um, and you can see this is from that New Year's episode, that one screenshot right there. Um, very beautiful shrine. Also, this was, <laughs> this was, funnily enough, taken the day after I filmed the Anohana um, anime pilgrimage. So it's still freaking raining. Like I swear, every time I do an anime pilgrimage, it's raining. Um, but this is a place where where Emma can be placed, and you can see all just all look at all these lucky star ones. It's so cute. Unfortunately, I couldn't go very close to the Emma because apparently there was a bee problem at that tree, and they didn't want you to get close to the tree. So I'm glad that was there, and I'm glad that I could read that there were Hachi. Hachi is bee in Japanese because uh, I would not have wanted wanted to do with that. Uh, but you can just see all of this artwork, so cute. And just this shrine is very beautiful. I mean, I think other than the the Todi Gate at the beginning that fell down, it seems like it's fairly well kept. Maybe they realized when the Todi Gate fell down, they were like, oh man, we need to, uh, we need to, to make sure this place isn't going to fall apart. So there, yeah, there's a stone tablet outside that also has the Hiragi twins on it. And then, you know, walking back to the station, you actually see the station um, in the background here, right next to the Lucky Star mural. And so at the very end of my little Lucky Star journey, I did buy um, the Hiragi Twins uh, Katsu sauce. It's kind of like this very sweet Asian sauce. I don't particularly like it that much. I actually still have it um, with me and we I use it occasionally. 
But I was just like, I I gotta get this. Unfortunately, they didn't have the ramen or the hot sauce, so I would have bought those instead. But just getting something like that was so really cool. It helps out the local business. So I, I would say if you go to any of these places, try to help out the local businesses. Um, so I think that's really all I have about Lucky Star. So we're going to move on to Steins Gate. Steins Gate is a big one. It was a lot. There's a lot of places in Steins Gate to go, and I think... A lot of it does have to do with the fact that Steins Gate is based off of a visual novel. So, you know, in visual novels, you're, you're, you kind of are in one place for a long time. So these backgrounds become very memorable. So this is in Akihabara, Tokyo, which if you're already going to be in Tokyo, I know you otaku people, you guys are going to go to Akihabara. Akihabara, if you don't know, is basically the otaku and anime capital of Tokyo. It's where you can go to buy manga, to buy figures, to go to maid cafes. Um, anything super otaku you want to do, you can do in Akihabara. Absolutely, I absolutely love Akihabara. There are people who are say who will say that Akihabara is overrated. No, I fully embrace Akihabara, and it's cringe. I absolutely love it. So we're gonna talk about um, the Aki we're gonna talk about the shrine that's in Akihabara. We're gonna talk about the Radio Kaikon. Akihabara Station, uh, the beef bowl place where you always see the Science Gate characters eat at. And then, of course, the maid cafe in which Ferris Nyan Nyan works at. That's also a thing. So we will mute the sound here and begin. So you might, if you're super into Science Gate, some of this might already be ringing a bell in your head, especially if you've played the visual novel, because a lot of what I have filmed right here are literal backgrounds to the science gate visual novel. So I think the very first thing that we do is we go to the Radio Kaikon. So if you've seen at least the first episode of Steins Gate, oops, spoilers. <laughs> if you've seen at least the first episode of Steins Gate, you're going to recognize this Radio Kaikon. This is where um, all everything goes down, essentially, in that very first episode, and it's also where things go down near the end. It's This is not really spoilers because it's the first episode, but this is the building in which the satellite um, crashes into the building, and this is the building where um, you first meet Makisei Kurisu, and where a lot of stuff happens in that first episode. So this is a place you really want to go, not only for the Steins Gate stuff, but because this building is literally just a big nerd shop. You can get anime figures here, keychains, um, there's a K book, so ha which has like tons of manga. I think there's an Ami Ami in here too. So yeah, don't just, you know, walk by and be like, oh, that's in Steins Gate. You're, wanna go, you're gonna wanna go inside as well. And I think I have some uh, video footage from inside. There's actually Steins Gate vending machines in here. And you used to be able to get Steins Gate water bottles and that picture there, I have two of them, but for some reason right now they don't have them. I'm not really sure why they don't have the Steins Gate water bottles, but it's the first, like I had, I'd been there so many times, they always had the Steins Gate water bottles and now they don't. So hopefully they refill them. But you can see the uh, Steins Gate vending machines inside the Radio Kaikon, which is really cool. This is also inside the Radio Kaikon. So all, you can just, get all of the Science Gate merch that your little heart could ever desire. So after that, we went to the shrine that is in Science Gate where Okabe uh, um, goes a lot of the times. This is actually, um, this is actually a really quiet part of Tokyo, despite the fact that trains are going by and there's people like right outside. This is such a relaxing little, little shrine in Tokyo. That's something so interesting about Tokyo is that you know, it is a big city. It's way bigger than New York City. And there's, you got the hustle and the bustle and all the, you know, business people trying to get to work. And it is loud, but then, like, you find these little quiet shrines and quiet areas that, oh, man, I absolutely love. So this is right across from the river from Akihabara. So it's still technically Akihabara. It's just on the other side of the river. So you'll have to walk maybe about five minutes to get here. Um, but, yeah, this is definitely the, um, the, shrine, the shrine from Steins Gate. Oh, Alan, uh, who loves the games, actually, he he talks about how the IBN 5100 from the show, if you know, you know, if you don't, well, watch the show, I guess. Um, the IBN 5100 could have been, theoretically, like, in a shed in that shrine. <laughs> so if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. 
But um, yeah, this bridge right here is featured a lot in the visual novel and in the anime too, which I didn't even realize until I crossed back over into Akihabara. I originally crossed this bridge to go film the shrine. And then on the way back in Akihabara, I was like, wait a minute, this bridge is totally in Steins Gate. So like, it doesn't even matter if you have your anime pilgrimages um, completely planned out because you will go on these pilgrimages and be like, I did not plan this, but I remember this from the anime, which I've done so many times. So Alan is, Alan is a big Science Gate nerd. He's played like all the freaking games, like all the spinoff games. So he kind of like nerds out a bit, whereas I've just seen the anime. So I was only able to, I was only able to say things based off of what I knew from the anime. So if you if you want to geek out on Steins Gate, I don't know, I'll give you his number or something. But um, he really goes into details about like spin-offs from the visual novel that have things like in Akihabara that you can look at. And it's by the So What I'm a Spider mural. It's quite funny. Um so the next thing we did is we ate at the beef bowl place. Um, I couldn't actually film in the beef bowl place because uh, it's a very locally owned place. You, you've got to be careful when filming in Japan because you never know it's going to be appropriate or inappropriate. So um, I didn't film in the beef bowl place, but it is uh, a place that you can eat that if you want to. I actually don't recommend it that much. I hate to say it, but the beef bowl at Yoshinoya and at Sukiya, which are like chain restaurants, is actually better in my opinion. But hey, if you want to support a small business, if you just want to eat at the beef bowl place, that's a Science Gate. Um, you can click on the, you can go to the video, and I have it listed. Uh, it's called Sampo Beef Bowl, if that helps. So the next thing we went to is the uh, maid cafe. This is the maid cafe from that Ferris Nyan Nyan works at, and that Daru goes to all the time. <laughs> Um, and they actually have a whole menu of Steins Gate inspired drinks. Now, here's the thing. You can't film in maid cafes. Maid cafes are one of the strictest places like in Japan for taking pictures and filming because when you go to a maid cafe, like they sell pictures of the maids like at the cafe and you can also buy checky, which are like printed Polaroids of you and the maid. And they're usually like 15 to $20. So they make bank off those. So they don't want you to like take your ca video camera or whatever and just film the maids or take pictures of the maids and stuff. Um, you can generally at maid cafes take pictures of like your food and your drinks and stuff, but maids off limits. But inside of that maid cafe, uh, see these pictures were totally um, appropriate that I could take. Yeah, they had just merch from Steins Gate. They had the little Ferris Nyan Nyan stands there. So, you know, they were also fully embracing the fact that their maid cafe is in Steins Gate. And sometimes they also wear the official Steins Gate um, maid cafes, uh, maid cafe outfits that are from the anime. So, and it was just a very good maid cafe. Like I've been to a few maid cafes where I've been like, oh, okay, but Malish was really, really good. The food was actually really good. Um, and then I think the next thing we did was on the way to the station, we were just looking at different places that were featured in the visual novel background wise. Um, also Akihabara station, which uh, is featured a lot in the anime. So there are actually instructions in the visual novel for Steins Gate that tell you how to get to the future gadget laboratory, how to get to Okabe's laboratory. So we decided to follow these directions to see if they were real and see if it could actually take us to the lab. And so the directions took us to this like little alleyway that looked like the alleyway from Steins Gate. It looked very similar, but we couldn't really figure out exactly which building <laughs> the Future Gadget Laboratory was. It's one of those things where all of the buildings kind of looked like they could be the Future Gadget Laboratory. But either way, it was still fun. If you kind of want to go uh, to Akihabara and you have pictures from the visual novel and from the anime to kind of um, compare like build the buildings to what's actually in the original content, then yeah, you can do that. Um, you have to kind of keep in mind though, especially with Lucky, Lucky Star and Steins Gate specifically, like Steins Gate, you know, the anime aired in 2010 and the visual novel is even older. So that's like, you know, over a decade ago, things could change. And it's the same 
for Lucky Star, like, Lucky Star was 15 years ago, so things are going to change. So if you do an anime pilgrimage for an anime that was pretty old, you have to keep in mind that buildings are going to change. So, and that was definitely true for Science Gate and Lucky Star, given that they're both over a decade old. Um, these, I actually think I got these in the Maid Cafe. They're just little stand things. Uh, I think I got, Fer yeah, Ferris Nyan Nyan, which was definitely meta for the Maid Cafe. Um, but yeah, we just got our fair share of Steins Gate merch while we were in Akihabara as well, so made sense. So, after Steins Gate, we are going to talk about Sound Euphonium. Uh, Sound Euphonium, man, just one of my f favorite anime ever, and this was one of my more recent anime pilgrimages. This is in Uji, Kyoto. So this is really far away from Tokyo. If you're going to go to Kyoto, you may as well fly into Osaka. You see the purple? It's like yellow, green, green, blue, and then that purple area. That is where Kyoto is. That's where Osaka is. It's the Kansai area of Japan. Um, usually people either decide to fly into Tokyo or Osaka. Usually, um, if you're going to do both like if you're gonna do both you're gonna have to just do your stuff in Tokyo and then it's usually cheaper to fly to Osaka but some people will take the Shinkansen or the bullet train which ends up being more expensive I've taken an eight hour bus drive from Tokyo to Osaka just to give you an idea how far away this is from Tokyo I don't want you to get it in your head that like oh I'm in Tokyo I can do all the anime pilgrimages this is on a completely different side of Japan we're gonna talk about the mountain peak we're gonna talk about the bridge we're gonna talk about the river bench if you know you know for sound euphonium so let me mute this here. Oop, come on. There we go. So Kyoto. A lot of people know Kyoto as a very historical place in Japan because it is where the capital used to be in Tokyo, uh, in, it used to be in Japan before it moved to Tokyo. So Let's see. The first thing I believe I did for this pilgrimage was go to the bridge. So this bridge, as you can see, Kumiko, the main character from Sound Euphonium, is always like running across this bridge. I believe this is the bridge she has to cross to go to sc between school and home a lot of the times. And this bridge was literally built in 300 AD. I'm not joking. There's a, a sign right outside of the bridge. It's like, yeah, this built bridge was built in 300 AD. That's insane. That is so long ago, but they still keep it up really, really well. Um, but yeah, it's it's the bridge that you always see the Sound Euphonium characters crossing. It's pretty famous, um, and there's a lot of famous scenes, especially from the movie, uh, the Sound Euphonium movie that are that feature this bridge. And then after the bridge, we gotta move right along. After the bridge, um, I went to this little street that is on a riverside that features a lot of matcha. Now. Uji Kyoto is very famous for its matcha or its green tea. So back in, back in like, uh, probably like the 1800s in Japan, um, Kyoto had fairly good matcha, fairly good green tea, but it wasn't as, or Kyoto, I should say Kyoto City, Kyoto proper, the capital of Kyoto Prefecture. But Uji had even better tasting, even higher quality matcha green tea than Kyoto City did and so everyone would actually specifically go to Uji back in those days for the better tasting and higher quality matcha so this town Uji not is not only known for being in Sound Euphonium but also for being like probably the most famous town for matcha or green tea so if you like matcha and green tea and Sound Euphonium you're killing two birds with one stone here so this is the bridge where you often find uh, Kumiko sitting and thinking. This is featured, as you can see right there, um, this is featured in the anime and um, in the movie quite a bit. So this is actually right off of the matcha road or the, gr the green tea road. So you can like go down matcha road and get, get some matcha stuff, get some green tea stuff, walk down by the river and yeah, there's her, uh, her bench. And then after the bench, I walked down a little bit. Now, I will say this town did not embrace um, Sound Euphonium as much as the other towns embraced, for example, like Girls in Ponzer and Anohana. And I think that at first really shocked me because 
Sound Euphonium is way newer. I believe the anime came out in, like, what, 2014, 2015? And it also, like, recently had a movie within the last two years or something. So I was kind of really shocked at first, but this is in the information in the Visitor Center right here, so they're obviously definitely well aware that um, Sound Euphonium takes place here. Um, but the, I don't think they embraced it as much as other places. I think I have a helicopter going over my house, so if you hear the helicopter, ignore it for some reason. I live near a Japanese military base, so the helicopters, they go crazy here. Um, so yeah, I, I overall really enjoyed this time. It's almost like I went to Uji for uh, Sound Euphonium, but left because left with a, a newfound like des, des, like desire to go back in my heart mostly for the matcha like I really do love matcha and green tea so I was more I was I was more than happy to like want to go back and not even for the sound euphonium stuff but for the matcha stuff um and that's also the really cool thing you can discover if you go to different places in Japan that are featured in anime is that you might fall in love with the town for other reasons other than it's in an anime for for Uji it was definitely the green tea thing so I think the only other thing I had to find was, ah, uh, in Sound Euphonium, you often see um, the characters, uh, sp specifically uh, Reina and Kumiko, walking up this like little mountain and up to, a, up to the peak at this little rest area. Right, let's get a good, there we go, right here. So... This place, um, usually Reina always goes up first and then Kumiko goes up and follows her. And there, there's a lot of, like, different conversations that the two characters have with each other, as you can see right there. Now, I really wanted to go at nighttime because in the anime, the girls are always up there at nighttime. But the city actually had a notice out saying that we don't recommend you go up here at nighttime because the lighting is not very good and we don't want you to get hurt. Which, climbing up that mountain was nothing. It was pretty flat. It was, it was a pretty, like, not a very steep incline all the way up. So I could have gone at night. But, you know, safety first, kids. Uh, but this was just really beautiful. Not a hard hike to get to at all. Uh, and it was just, it was really surreal to be in a place where Reina and Kumiko, who are two, some, two of, like, my favorite characters, and I just, like, love their relationship and, their, and the dynamic of those two characters, um, to be in a place where they held super important conversations in the anime. So that is the last place on the sound euphonium uh, anime pilgrimage that I wanted to show you. So, oh my god, Love, Life, Sunshine. Love, Life, Sunshine, we really gotta keep moving, but Love, Life, Sunshine is Shizuoka. There's a beach, the school, the aquarium, and the shopping street. I was really, really impressed with the amount of Love, Life stuff Numazu had. So, yes, that is, that is, you saw it right, that was a Love Life boat. So, uh, you know, Love Life Sunshine came out after the original Love Life, and the original Love Life was big, and I want to say that Love Life Sunshine is probably even bigger in Japan than the original Love Life is. So I got on a train from Ibaraki all the way to Shizuoka, uh, Numazu, Numazu Shizuoka, which is probably two hours it took me about three hours to get there but if you're coming from Tokyo it'll probably only take you two hours so you could definitely do a day trip kind of thing now right outside of Numazu station they actually have the Love Life Sunshine Cafe yes this whole place has like this cafe for Love Life Sunshine um and not only the cafe but the animate store that is right near the cafe just full of Love Life Sunshine stuff so you can you can Get your fill at the cafe, and then you can go buy merch at the local animate that has just, like, all, all the love life stuff, right? And not only that, my hotel that I was staying... Well, this is the cafe, but the... I wasn't allowed to film in the cafe, so these are just pictures in the cafe. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, my hotel as well embraced... Like, when I walked in, this is inside of the hotel that I was staying in, Numazu had, like the stuffed animals and like, this is outside of the hotel I stayed in which had Love Life Sunshine stickers on it like fully embraced I can just imagine like business people like oh we have to stay at this hotel because we're gonna have a meeting here and they like get out of their taxis and like the hotel is like anime <laughs> it's just really funny to me so not only the hotel but there's a shopping street which is featured in the Love Life Sunshine movie where um 
the girls do a whole dance. This is that shopping street. Actually, this area right here, I believe, is where they do the dance. I might have a screenshot that pops up here. There we go, there it is. So this is from the movie, and this is the shopping street in which they dance. And so in the shopping street, and basically all around town, you find these manhole covers. These are really nice designed manhole covers. Like, it's not just an image. Like, it's actually kind of like, kind of carved in, if that makes sense. So there's the Chica one. I think I came by several different ones too. There's the Rico one, so you can find this. So I, I always try to buy these acrylic stands because then I can take cool pictures of them around the area where the anime takes place. So this is, this whole area of Numazu, um, which also obviously embraces <laughs> Love Life, uh, Love Life, whoever uh, runs this particular building, which is part of, um, there's a part of Numazu that specializes, it's like the district that is all seafood and it's where the aquarium is. It's like a famous seafood street. Um, whoever owns that tourist building really loves Hanamaru because that was a lot of Hanamaru drawings. So it got me some uh, fished chicken tenders here. Um, there was a baker, there's a bakery that's featured in the anime that also used to do these Love Life cookies. Unfortunately, those are just, I want to say those are just um, probably like wax looking one, uh, wax ones for display. But they used to, I think they used to sell those cookies and they don't anymore. And that's me being a fatty and eating a bunch of uh, sugar. <laughs> and so the next day, um, I actually got on this Love Life bus, which is significant because um, the voice actors for the girls actually call out the bus stops. So if you like push, you want to get off on the stop, they'll be like, okay, next stop is blah, blah, blah. And it'll be like Mari's voice actor. <laughs> or I think depending on where, what, who, which one, you, which button you push, I think the voice actor will come up and be like, the bus is stopping. <laughs> it's very funny. So also, um, if you take a bus from uh, main, main new, the main Numazu downtown area, um, to off closer to the coast, you can get on the Love Live boat and sail over to the Love Live Island. <laughs> it's not really a Love Live Island, but it may as well be because when you're over there, like you can buy more Love Live stuff. Um, the shrine at the very top of the um, island is full of um, Emma that have. Love Life Sunshine drawings on them. There is um, a free aquarium if you take the boat over to this island. There's even a Girls and Ponzer one, which I was like, salute to Ibaraki, salute to Girls and Ponzer. But this is um, a shrine, which I don't remember if it's featured or not in the anime, but people will still hang Emma and like their little drawings. And like, I even saw um, like stuffed animals from Love Life Sunshine there. So just very, very funny. Um, yeah, this is the, this is Mito Beach. Um, where you can see this screenshot right here. This is kind of the very beginning of Love Live, actually. Um, this is really close to where some of the main characters live, too. It just featured a lot in the anime. So, Mito Beach is a place where you definitely want to go. It's very close by to where the Love Live um, boat is and to where that island is, too. So, all of this stuff I got to within a day. I think this trip, specifically, because there was so much stuff, I did in two days. So keep in mind that if you want to do everything that there is to possibly do in Numazu, you might want to, if you're staying in Tokyo, you might want to make this one an overnight trip just because there's so much to do. Um, okay, so we really got to get moving along. Okay, other locations that uh, you can go to um, that I have not yet been to, but they exist and ones that I plan to do. Love Life Nijigasaki, this is in Odaiba, Tokyo. So if you're in the Tokyo area, very easy to get to. Um, this is funny because Love Life, the Love Life Nijigasaki girls, they go to school inside of Tokyo Big Site, which is where Kamaket is. I think that's so funny. So I could do uh, hopefully a whole Nijigasaki video very soon. Uh, Fujisawa Kanagawa, I did already film this and I went here. I was a little bit disappointed by it, if I'm honest, because Fujisawa did not fully embrace Rascal, this is not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, but they don't have to. Fujisawa is already a very touristy place because there is a little island off of the coast of Fujisawa called Enoshima that has amazing views of Mount Fuji. So it's already a very touristy place that doesn't really need anime to help it out. And that kind of goes hand in hand with like, do these towns really need anime to boost its tourism? Well, it depends on the town. Fujisawa, 
doesn't need anime. Like, it's already very touristy. But a place like Ora Ibaraki, which had to embrace Girls on Ponzer, you know, that was a place that wasn't getting very high tur tourism numbers until it decided to embrace Girls on Ponzer. Um, Kamichi Toy Yama, which is where the Wolf Children House is, um, this is a real place, you can go there, uh, and that car in the real life photo is not photoshopped in, the owner of the house literally decided to buy the same car that was featured in the Wolf Children anime, so it is there sometimes. That's crazy, I hopefully I'll plan on doing this, um, this year too. Uh, Ikibukuro Tokyo, oh man, this one, I feel like I'd have to, I've only seen the Durara anime, I feel like I'd have to read the novels in order to just remember even what happened in Durara and all of the places that are in Ikibukuro, so I'm not sure I'm going to do this one soon, but Ikibukuro in Tokyo, actually funny story, I went to Ikibukuro on Halloween like two or three years ago in Japan and I saw a Selty Sterlison cosplayer in Ikibukuro, that was very, very, very mind-blowing, I literally felt like I was in Durara. Uh, Eurocamp, which, oh man, I pray to the gods that I can do this this year. I really do. Um, I want to go to Kofu Yamanashi and get some really good views of Mount Fuji and hopefully camp there and just embrace the Eurocamp stuff. I have heard that there's a lot of Eurocamp stuff here and that they do embrace Eurocamp, so this year, I hope. Uh, but that's, that's really all that, um, I have. Sorry, ignore other panels this weekend. I'm not doing more panels. <laughs> this is, from, this is my, <laughs> that was when I presented this at Ichiban Con. But, um, if you are interested in looking at these videos, um, you go to my channel, youtube.com slash gingergarden. All of the videos I showed you, you can just watch there and I should have information on each video of exactly where these places are if you want to go there. Um, if you have any questions, just like, let me know on Twitter or Instagram. If you're like, I can't figure out where this place is, I really want to go there, just any questions at all about anime tourism, uh, please let me know. Um, I know we didn't get a lot of chance to talk about if anime tourism is, is, is good or bad or not, but it really just boils down to what towns need it and what towns don't. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention is there have been some shrines that have said, like, don't leave your anime plushies here, don't uh, draw anime, like, on the on the Emma or anything. So there have been cases like that, but overall, I think that anime tourism has been very positive, especially for places like Washinomiya with Lucky Star and Chichibu for um, Anohana and especially Orai for Girls and Ponzer because who knows what their tourism would be like um, without those things. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this panel so very much. Uh, sorry about any of the noises, but you know, we try here. And th just thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, uh, let me know. Thank you so much, Anime Archaeology, aka Brent, for letting me run the panel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care. Bye. Boom. All right. Um, I hope all this works. Um, we'll see. We're getting a weird thing there. Okay, we'll figure out how all this works. Hey everyone, um, we are here. Thank you so much for that panel. That was awesome. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, Want to go ahead and kind of introduce yourself and tell the folks about yourself? No. Makes a lot of sense. Um, did you guys hear that? Did that come through on the chat? I just want to make sure about that. Um, I'm seeing weirdness on my end, which is typical. Um, always that is, I guess it's the life of technology. Yeah. Okay. It looks like you're coming through now. So, um, cool. want to do that again real quick? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, uh, my name is Kira and I live in Ibaraki, Japan right now. And I like to go around to different places in Japan that have settings featured in anime, just because I like to watch a bunch of anime, and yeah, that's what I like to do. That's about all you need to know, I guess. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, cool, cool, cool. So yeah, I think I think we got all that switched around. Um, that is, um, and like I know you've been spending a lot of, you spent a lot of time in Japan. Um, um, was there any particular thing that kind of really turned you on to the idea of like, anime tourism videos and kind of doing that um, as your kind of main thing on your channel? 
Yeah, um, to be honest, when I first moved to Japan, I it was like an idea that was in the back of my head, but I didn't really know if I could make that a reality. Like, I didn't know if it was actually a big deal. Yeah. Like, a big a deal enough to make an 18-minute long YouTube video <laughs> about one place, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's actually um, a place called uh, Anime Tur. Er, er, there's a like um, an organization called Anime Tourism, and you can actually, if you type in Anime Tourism on Google, you can find the website, and they list a bunch of anime in all of the places that you can go to that are featured in the shows. And so I live in Ibaraki, so I was like, well, I'm just going to check out the Girls in Panzer thing. Mm. Maybe it's not a big deal. If it's not a big deal, I'll just go into a beach. And then I went there, and as you can see in the video, they make it a really big deal. <laughs> I was really shocked. Yeah. So now I'm kind of shocked when places don't embrace mm. the anime tourism as much. Um, but yeah, the moment I went to the uh, Olorai Ibaraki for Girls and Ponzer, that's when I was like, okay, towns are making this a big deal. This is becoming a thing. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you ever gone to some place where it felt like they went overboard? Like, is, is, there, a, is there a line? I don't know if anywhere's been overboard, but yeah. I mean, I guess it depends who you ask, because yeah. for me, then I love it. I think it's <laughs> awesome. Um, but, you know, maybe there could be some um, locals of certain places who think it's a little strange. Sure. Um, I do know that for the Lucky Star Town, Wajinomiya, there were some locals who were a little bit like, hey, weird otaku aren't going to show up at our shrine and like be inappropriate, are they? And no, that's never been a problem at Wajinomiya. In fact, there's never really been any problems at all from what I've known yeah. um, about anime tourism sparking up in places but you know you can see why especially older people might be a little bit skeptical given sure. like even we talked earlier today on con about like um the guy who was like a murderer mm -hmm. who, who was an otaku so i'm sure there's bad things especially yeah. with older japanese people that might ring up in their head mm -hmm. uh but no i don't think it's ever been over the top and i cool. hope it continues to actually grow cool yeah well and i remember when um was it the k -On school um, uh, uh, I, I remember because uh, uh, I, I, if I recall correctly, K on is uh, the school there is based on an elementary school, and mm. otaku started showing up to like take pictures and so forth, oh, gosh. and 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 like not inappropriate, not, not like you know forcing themselves on, but they're kind of showing up and right. oh, and, and everyone was kind of like, but still that's hold on, <laughs> right. let's and figure that, all this yeah. stuff out. But like, like you said, nothing bad happened. So I wonder if, well, that's something yeah, yeah. I'm always really careful about yeah. specifically is the schools. And I actually mentioned in my Love Live video, because um, the beach that I was at in the mm. Love Live thing, it's actually very close to the Love Live Aqua's uh, school. Oh, cool. But I mentioned in the video, I'm like, I'm not going to go to the school. I, I yeah. never go to schools. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been a teacher in Japan, so I know it's like, mm. that, that's just not, it's just like not something I'm going to do. Yeah. So, you know, um, totally. but, you know, you just got to be careful and have some common sense. Exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and I guess schools probably aren't going to you know, have tours <laughs> in the middle of the day. Um, so it's kind of like, well, I, you know. every Japanese school is, is almost the same anyway. So That's you've true. seen one, you've seen them all. <laughs> Trust me, I've been to several. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still have like you know, the, the, the old 1950s school in the back? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Um, I used to work at one where like the fourth floor like a really old school. It's like the fourth floor is completely closed down and it's like really old and it's like wow. empty, not renovated because, you know, the population of Japan is going down. So there's mm. less kids being born and born every year. Oh, so yeah. elementary schools are getting smaller and smaller. Mm. And so you can actually, like if you teach at a elementary school in Japan, you can actually see the effects of that directly. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure the, uh, that uh, was Hanako-chan is, uh, you know, the, the, those stories are alive and well in that school. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, um, w w uh, what are some of the kind of uh, more unusual things you've seen in terms of, like, anime tourism? You know, towns trying to get on there. Because obviously you can have, you know, the, the, the standees up. You can be selling merch and so forth. But where are folks kind of on the, on the bleeding edge of anime tourism? Hmm. Or are they? Such a good oh, man, that's such a good question. Um... Man, what do you mean by like right on the edge? Yeah, I, I mean, um, I'm, I'm imagining. Well, like uh, seeing the, uh, the 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 boat, um, mm. you know, that was kind of like okay, that that's that's like normal like, people get on that, right? You know, and <laughs> normal like, you know, people. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's yeah. um, I think 
you know, when I got on that love life boat and you see a bunch of like, you know, what we like to call normies, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, which Japan has their own word for normies too. Oh. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's a you know, very common thing over here to call normies normies. Yeah. And so, uh, it, you know, people don't seem to really mind it that much. In fact, mm. it's like people will take pictures of it and be like, oh, cool. We're on the, we're on the anime boat. Like, I don't know what anime <laughs> this is, but we're on the anime boat. And so, I mean, especially um, the younger that people are, um, even people in their 30s and 40s, I think, are really okay with it because their kids mm. are really into it. Mm -hmm. Especially with things like Kimetsu no Yaiba and Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen, I mean, adults are mostly into those things in America. But those are kids shows in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, they just are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with those rising in popularity, anime is more popular now with kids in Japan, I feel, than it ever has been. Wow. And um, so I think parents of those kids that are in their 30s and 40s are embracing the anime thing more and cool. thinking like, okay, this is a good thing. My child is becoming more artistic because of this. It's bringing in tourism to this town who probably which probably wouldn't have tourism otherwise so yeah. i think mostly it's being considered as a good really good thing that's, that's awesome um is there any sort of like um like like um certain length of time that, that you expect this to be like has there been any mm -hmm. places where like yeah we had all the anime tourism stuff but it's kind of pulled back and now you don't see much of it anymore, or is it kind of thing a thing where once it's set up, it's just kind of going to be there, and there's no like obvious endpoint. Yeah, it it really depends because like with Old Eye, um, Girls and Ponds, or it you know Girls and Ponds, I think the anime came out in like 2013, 2014, mm. something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's been around a while. Yeah. And they they don't seem to be slowing down with that. I think mm. they know that it's working. Yeah. <laughs> People are coming because when I went to Old Eye, a lot of the tourists that were there. They were there for girls and ponds, or you just tell. <laughs> but then, like some other places, like for Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, mm -hmm. um, you know, that series is way newer. Mm -hmm. And Fujisawa doesn't really embrace that show as much, but they don't need to, given that they're already a very touristy place. Mm -hmm. um, but back when Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai was first airing, they did have a lot more stuff. They had mm -hmm. the stands in the station, they had like the flags, they, I think they had more merch too. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes an anime, if an anime is like airing, mm. I don't know if the studio tries to get the town to like me, like, hey, we'll give you some money if you like <laughs> advertise the show that takes place in your town a bit more. Mm. So it could just be that. Um, and then, you know, stuff with like Lucky Star, I really noticed that you can't go to a lot of the places that are in Lucky uh, Star anymore because they've changed so much. Yeah. Um, and if you go watch my video, you'll be able to, I'll, I talk about that. Um, a little bit yeah, so it really yeah, just yeah. depends on the longevity of the fans how, how you know girls and ponds are just never it's like chaos it's like <laughs> never gonna die right so it really just depends it's one of the things that surprised me i was like you know lucky star came out a while ago and it hasn't mm -hmm. you know they've been girls and ponds are movies and so forth and so on so there's, there's been a little bit more movement than, on that but it you know it sort of warmed my heart to see all the lucky stars uh, you know merch out there for a show that uh um, that uh, obviously still have a, has its fan base even after all this time. Yeah, and I, that's I was kind of worried about that when I first went to Washington. I'm like, what if like no one cares about Lucky Star anymore? <laughs> but apparently, people really do care if they're willing to paint a mural. Like yeah, that. I know. Jeez, you know? it's a big deal. <laughs> it's pretty pretty awesome. Um, um, do you have any other sort of um, suggestions for folks who want to get into anime tourism? Um, you know, kind of tips and tricks. Um, what I would do is, uh, if you just Google anime tourism, there'll be like a website. I can't remember exactly the website, but it'll be the first thing that shows up most likely. And you can, um, I also, I link it on my um, YouTube channel as well, if people are interested in going there. You can go to my individual videos and I sometimes put the Google map links and other information you need to know for the, the individual pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. But in general, just go to that website. You can scroll down. They have you can categorize it by um, region of Japan. So if you're going to be in Tokyo, look up Kanto region of Japan. Just go through the anime and see if there's anything that is that strikes your fancy. You click on the anime. Generally, the, the website will tell you how to get there. If it's really worth going there, like you don't really want to go there just for like nothing. <laughs> um, but I will say that sometimes, you know, take the risk, go to a place that you think maybe while there not, not, might not be a lot of aspects of anime tourism, there's other, either nine times out of 10, it's Japan, there's going to be yeah. other cool <laughs> things in these small towns. 
So that's what I would say is, is go to that website, start off with your favorite anime and just like go from there. It takes a lot of planning, mm -hmm. but it's really rewarding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that is awesome. Cool. Um, anything else you wanted to share sort of, you know, um, on your mind now that you've uh, gotten all the way uh, through the panel? Uh, not really. Only that um, the next one that I'll have up mm. is Rascal Does Not Dream Bunny Girl Snip Nice. That one will be up soon. Hopefully mm. this week. Cool, cool. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully this year I be, I'll, I'm able to do uh, Love Live Nijigasaki, which mm. is a no-daiba. And, God, I want to do Yuru Camp so bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. That's a big one, too. That's a project. Um, wow. Yeah, they all are honored, mm -hmm. truly. Like, um, it's funny. I actually wanted to go to the Wolf Children house last mm -hmm. year. Um, and the house is on top of a mountain <laughs> near the Japanese Alps. Wow. So you can't go there in the winter. There's too much oh, snow. Yeah. There's no trains up there. There's no, you have to kind of like walk up this mountain to get up there. <laughs> and so I emailed the um, the owners of the house because they let people come in and look in the house and cool. all that stuff. I'm like, am I able to come there in like March? I'm mm -hmm. like, hmm. You should wait for April when all the snow melts because you don't want to die on the mountain. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, this is extreme. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just trying to see a house. So it's really, it, it, it takes some planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sadly, uh, not all anime is made with like tourism in, in mind for the locations right. that it's, it's made of. Right. Yeah. But now right. some some are. Some, True. Yeah, that what was the, uh, uh, I want to make a mug cup anime oh yeah aired last year promoting gifu prefecture mm -hmm. that was cool that's i nice. want to see more of that that's nice um and there was one that came out oh, i just had a quick question oh, oh question from steve yeah uh so my question is so once we sneak over to japan how much do we have to pay you to be our our, our guide yeah exactly <laughs> well <laughs> no, i just want people to tag along for the ride so if you show up in japan I, you know, it's been two years since borders have been closed to tourists. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing all this stuff by myself. I would love to do it with friends. So if you come, if you come to Japan, you're in Tokyo, I can get to the airport and I don't know, I'll be like, all right, let's go to Girls in Ponzer Town. Hey, <laughs> like, sold. <laughs> so, hey, be my guest. Y'all are welcome. To, I'm 100% I'm serious, by the way. That's great. Absolutely. Yeah, totally, totally. Um... Zombieland Saga um, promoted uh, Saga, apparently, a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. nice, That's another nice. one. Um, yeah, there was one anime I came across a while back that was, um, like, anime tourism um, parody, where, like, it, it, this guy was going to, to some prefecture, I forget what it is, and it's, like, the like the lowest-ranked prefecture in Japan. And oh, so, Ibaraki? It, 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 probably Ibaraki. Um, and, yeah, that's and right. Yeah, and he's like, oh, it's great, I'm going to go there. And everyone's like, you're, you're going there? Really? Really, oh, you know, like the episode like ends there, you know, and it's like everyone is, everyone is like, you know, you know, we're making that, this that because is, of the thing, but you really don't want to come here. That doesn't surprise me at all because uh, it's just something in Japan about like everyone must live in the big city, like Tokyo, mm. Osaka, and the countryside still has such like a bad reputation is not really the right word, mm. but it's like you can't make a life for yourself in the countryside, which mm. I don't think is true. Yeah. It's just the romantic romanticization of big cities mm -hmm. as well. I mean, how many anime a year do we get that take place in Tokyo? Right. It's like every show. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Absolutely. is what it is. <laughs> There's a book that came out a while back called Anime Supremacy. It is basically um, fictionalized. It's kind of about the anime industry and so forth. And one of the, one of the, the uh, organizations is uh, there's a, like an anime studio that's like way out in some podunk town in the middle of nowhere because they were like, it's cheap. Like yes, please come and set up your you know ten person anime studio here. And it's mm -hmm. like yeah, that's a thing now. Like yeah. you know, it's it's it makes economic sense to be you know, the company in this town now. Right, <laughs> totally, a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. So I I hope that if anything, you know, we kind of see this boom in like relaxing countryside anime. Mm -hmm. So I hope maybe that yeah. will get people to start romanticizing the countryside a little bit more mm -hmm. but as it stands now i don't think so yeah <laughs> yeah hopefully soon hopefully soon mm. yeah so. cool well thank you so much um thank you um, again ginger gaiden on youtube please Yay. follow subscribe all this all the things um and we're going to switch over to a, another video now we will be back in a little bit bye, bye.